Good morning. It's kind of a dreary morning here in New York City. Got rain, but it's going to be warm. And that's a nice thing. Though who knows what will happen this summer. As I've been talking about all along, what's really important to us is global warming. It's our way of life. We've become worse than the first Gilded Age. None of us remembers the Gilded Age. That was in the beginning of the 1900s. And what is distinctive about this second Gilded Age? We got the fossil fuel industry to thank for it. Before, they were fledgling industries. They hadn't yet struck it rich. There were the 49ers who had struck gold, but we hadn't struck oil until the end of the 1800s, 1900s. And then it was full speed ahead. All our roads that were supposed to be for railroads went for cars. Our whole nation pivoted and grew because of the Industrial Revolution and because of fossil fuels. We were naive. Science wasn't there until the late 1970s. But from the 1970s until 2022, we've totally ignored what's happened to our Earth, our country, our people since the advent of the Industrial Revolution and fossil fuels. So what am I talking about? I'm talking about the once thriving middle class that's now succumbing, they say, to inflation. But it's not inflation only. It's the same poor wages or theft of wages that occurred during the Gilded Age. I understand that the big three providers of wireless communications, Verizon, AT&T, and T-Mobile, they've got little shops, but they're not corporate shops to sell retail, to sell the phones and other devices that we might purchase. No siree, they're taking unskilled labor, stealing their wages, and setting them up in these retail shops. Another instance of corporate monopolies gouging the little guy. I remember how it works because I was in business in Farmingdale when Home Depot came into being. And I remember it was a really banner year for flooring and for construction. So Home Depot set up shop and I swore to the local lumber company, I would not go with Home Depot. Not until Home Depot put them out of business, in fact, did I then seek other sources for my plywood. My guys were dedicated to me. I paid them well. They got paid exactly one week after the job was completed and they got paid in full. And most often I would cash out their checks for them so they didn't even have to wonder about going to the bank and finding time. The guys, the contractors who were not attached to any shops, they flocked to Home Depot and they would brag about making nine or 18,000 a week, which was unheard of in the flooring industry. Sure, you could make maybe 4,000 a week, but eight or 10 or 18, no. After about a month and a half, those same contractors came back to my shop looking for work. What Home Depot did to them is they had a customer satisfaction rule, which said, even if there was no problem, 
the contractor had to go back to the customer and make sure the customer was satisfied. Nobody from Home Depot looked at the job site, so the guys had to go back who installed the product. Most often it was pretty much okay and there was no problem. But every time somebody travels back to a job site, it takes away money from their earnings. And they weren't told this up front. Worse, Home Depot kept their first week or two wages as retainage against any misfortunes that might have occurred in the first week or two of that contractor's work. You can believe it, those guys never got that upfront money ever. So they were out all the big bucks that they were promised. After a while, when most contractors on Long Island got wind of what was happening at Home Depot, they didn't go back there, but it didn't matter because so many people had theft of wages. And that's what's happening today. Why do you think every industry is going on strike? And there's a remedy for that. The remedy is what they're doing in Great Britain. Antitrust doesn't go through the courts. Antitrust is dedicated through an administrative office. Well, I would bet if there was an administrative office dedicated to antitrust, they wouldn't be looking at just big tech. They'd be looking at the major monopolies in this country and breaking them up. But we're not so interested in breaking up monopolies. So we've got fossil fuels. And why do I say that's the number one on the hit parade? and the number one killer of all of us. The Great Salt Lake is drying up. We've got citrus catastrophes in Florida where they've been invaded by an Asian bug of some sort that is killing off the crops and making them green and bitter. We've got other catastrophes, high levels of pollution, water resources that are dwindling, earthquakes that are becoming magnified, and on and on and on, all because of fossil fuels. And what are those guys doing with their windfalls? Well, they've made about 50, 60 billion dollars in profit, the big majors as they're called, and they've done that for the last two years, and they'll probably do it again. With that money, you would think that perhaps they would start investing in renewables, and they are. They're taking maybe about 5% of their winnings and profits, and they're putting that into renewables. But that's not enough, folks. Not when we know that carbon emissions are destroying our way of life. Everyone is suffering one way or another, whether it's cancer, whether it's pollution, whether it's asthma, whether it's heart attacks, whether it's opioid addiction, gunshot wounds and deaths, you name it, our society is succumbing to the second gilded age. And it could be repaired easily. There could be a windfall tax on all those profits, or better yet, take away half of their subsidies. Give it to the people. Let's have a real social safety net for everyone. I understand the SNAP program is decreasing as we speak. It's getting cut off this month. And in states like Florida or Tennessee, they've already cut off the food stamp program. Why should anyone have to suffer just because of corporate greed? 
and no one stopping it. Lord knows it's not labor that's contributing to inflation. They're lucky if they're getting a decent living wage. They're lucky if they get paid at the end of the week. I remember when the crash of 2008 occurred, my policy of always paying the next week for this week's work, that went away. My guys were desperate for cash. Gasoline prices were high. There wasn't enough work. I cashed out their checks in 24 hours. So I know what it's like to be desperate. I lived on my savings so that my mechanics didn't starve. And I did it for a lot of years. Not these guys. These guys are taking their windfall profits, plowing it back into their companies so they can make a killing in income that they're hoping is not taxed and giving it back to shareholders. I have another story about ExxonMobil because I dated a guy in the 90s who worked for ExxonMobil. And I asked him, what did he do? And he said, basically, he said, there are nine people in the corporate offices and we're a bank. That's all it is. We just take in the cash. So they've been a bank for many, many years. Then they went into development. And now when we don't need them to develop any oil, and they are indeed a bank because the money keeps rolling in, they want to develop more oil fields and shale fields. Really, that'll just push our earth over the edge. Antarctica is melting. There's cacti in Switzerland. There's flooding all over. New Zealand had a cyclone that has devastated the North Island once again. How much trauma must all of us witness and be part of and suffer for? Because we cannot change and adapt our way of life to a renewable energy source. I don't say get rid of fossil fuels, but I do say start building the parallel systems now so we can phase them out. And yeah, solar and wind are not going to be sufficient. You're going to need hydrogen. But if you don't start and you don't invest in research and development, we'll never get there. And if you don't have antitrust, we'll never have entrepreneurs again either. That's another story. The beginning of the last century, up through the, the 70s, I would think, AT&T, Corning, Bell Labs, they invested heavily in research and development. I know because I made good money on trading their stock and hoping that it would be profitable. And I made money on Lucent Technologies. Who's doing research and development now? Very few. Everyone wants to merge and combine. And I remember when the pharmaceutical industries started to combine and they did what was called inversions. I was angry, so angry that this had occurred because I remember when Pfizer Pharmaceuticals built their Groton facility and they did really good research and they would have eight, 10 blockbuster drugs coming down the pike. Now, nobody's doing something new. We need new inventions, new technologies. We need to stop laying off people and putting them to work on critical infrastructure and building for our future 
and theirs and their kids. And why do I care and why should you care? Because it's our children, our grandchildren, and future generations. That was the promise to everyone, that they would live better than we do, not worse. So for me, I'm not going to be totally happy unless I don't have something to complain about. I'll be extremely happy when I can do a little needlepoint, maybe, become like Grandma Moses and learn to paint. I don't know, but I'd like to be really happy knowing that the future is secure. So thank you for listening. God bless you all and have a lovely day. Bye now.